Hello, everyone. This is the second lecture of the course. Uh, the last lecture we have talked about random experiment, sample space, sigma algebra, and then we define probability. And we have pointed out that well, the sigma algebra is the domain for defining the probabilities. And we have talked about the fact that on the same uh, sample space, we can have multiple sigma algebra. So, and we also pointed out that choice of the sigma algebra is an important issue. So, today I am going to, I am trying to explain why this is an important issue using two examples. Example 16 and example 17. So example 16 is a standard uh, example that we are talking about the sample space which is S which consists of 60 points, first uh, 60 natural numbers. Note that in this case the sample space is finite. I can take F to be power set. I can take F to be power set in many examples, many times. I mean that power set is always a sigma algebra. So in this case, I take F to be power set. And if I use the classical definition of probability to define the probability of different events in F, F uh, then uh, I am fine with that because the S is uh, actually a finite set. Now think of little bit extension of this problem. Think of that when S is not finite, but I am talking about set of all natural numbers. So if I talk about all natural numbers, and again if I take the sample space to be the uh, power set of natural numbers, power set of the set of natural numbers, which is n, how can I define the probability in this case? So if I try to extend this definition, then a natural extension is that, well, I will take a finite set from here, 1 to n, 1 to small n, and I will count how many times the E occurs out of the uh, out of first n natural number. So, uh, so in the example 17, example 17, I have my S is to be set of natural numbers. F is our set of S. And from the previous definition where the classical example was fine, I try to extend the uh, definition of the probability and I define it as follows. Let Jn is 1, 2, so on up to n for all n greater than equals to 1. Okay. So for J1 is basically singleton set 1. J2 consists of 1 and 2, J3 consists of 1, 2 and 3, J4 consists of 1, 2, 3 and 4 and so on so forth. Now, in this case you see that using the uh, example 16 I can define what is the what is the probability very easily. So, in this case basically the if I try to define the probability of E, this is over uh, over Jn, the probability E is basically defined by nothing but number of times E occurs in, in, in Jn divided by total number of points in Jn. Okay? So, which I generally I write in the form that it is N, N, E. So, N, N, E is basically nothing but number of time E occurs out of the first n natural numbers uh, divided by n. Okay. And if I try to now extend this one to, uh, to the um, uh, set of all natural numbers, when S is set of all natural numbers, a straightforward uh, generalization would be over, over n and F equals to power set of n and natural extension extension is 
what is the natural extension? The natural extension is nothing but taking the limit. So probably P E is equals to limit n tends to infinity in n e divided by n. Okay. Now note that I do not know whether this limit going to exist or the limit does not exist. So overcome this problem. Suppose I take instead of limit, I take limit. Okay. Okay. So that 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 way we define it. That way we define the we define the extension of the uh, probability de defined using the classical definition here. Uh, uh, we extend it over 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 um, uh, cap over capital N, which is basically straight up on number. And this is a very natural extension taking the limit. Okay. Now let us uh, we will check whether this is a probability or not. But before that, let us try to find out. If I use this thing as a definition, what will be the value of p for some specific set? First, start with the set where a is the collection of all multi uh, all all uh, multiplication of three. Okay, so it is basically uh, three, six, nine, and in this way so on and so forth. So I am talking about omega is the multiple of three. I am talking about all multiple of three is the set of a. So if all multiple of C is the set of A, let us see how this probability behaves. So I need to find out what is in in A, right? To, to to compute this one, I need to find out what is in A. Note that if my n is of the form 3m for some m for some m. Obviously belongs to n. Then how many uh, how many of uh, how many of the three m are three m in uh, integers? How many of them are divided by three? We know there are exactly m integers which are divided by three. If I take n equals to three m plus one, how many are divided by three? It remains n m. Similarly, if n is equals to of the form 3m plus 2, then it is also n. So all the cases, it is basically m. Again, when it will turns out to be uh, 3m plus 3, which is actually going to become this one with 3m plus 1. So then I will have m plus 1 uh, numbers which are divisible by 3. So naturally, the ratio in a divided by n turns out to be m by 3m if n is of the form 3m it turns out to be m by 3m plus 1 if m uh, sorry if n is of the form 3m plus 1 and it turns out to be m by 3m plus 2 if n is of the form 3m plus 2. Okay, let us check how the how the limit behaves. You can easily check it that that my this ratio this ratio n n a by n actually lies between which one is bigger here? The biggest one is basically this one. So obviously this quantity is this quantity is bounded by 1 by 3 and the smallest one actually comes from this one which is nothing but 1 by 3 plus 2 by n. Now clearly if m tends to n tends to infinity then m also m also tends to infinity. So that basically means that uh, limit, if I take the limit both sides, the both of the side is basically 1 by 3. So clearly limit exists and limit n tends to infinity in A divided by n turns out to be 1 by 3. So clearly the value of the PA turns out to be 1 by 3. Clearly that when limit exists, lim sub and limit are same. So 
So, so P of A turns out to be 1 by C. Now, note that in this particular case, what was A? A was nothing but the state of state of all uh, state of multiple of C. So, naturally in this case, the probability 1 by C, the value 1 by C is very, very meaningful value in the sense that in every three numbers, there are 1, um, 1 multiple by C. There is one number which is multiple by 3. Every three integers, there is one number which is multiple by 3. So, 1 by 3 is a very, very meaningful number here. Similarly, if you try to find out what is the probability of, what is the P of B, you will see it turns out to be 1 by 4, where B is nothing but the state of multiple of C. So, again for B, it is also a very, very meaningful number. Now, sorry, now, let us talk about a singleton set. For example, uh, C equals to 2. For C equals to 2, it is very easy to see that Pn of C turns out to be 0 if n equals to 1 and it turns out to be 1 by n if n is greater than equal to 2 because when you take n is greater than equal to 2, then 2 occurs only once. So, n c 2, sorry, n c a n n c, so n n c turns out to be 1 and divided by n. So, naturally when I take the limit, it turns out to be 0. So, note that it is not only about 2, whatever singleton set I take, whatever value I take, after, after that value, it turns out to be, it turns out to be 1 by n, before that value it will be 0, and from that value to, uh, in that value onwards, it will turn out to be 1 by n, and the limit will be 0. And there is a problem for this. Now you see that the set S, so what I see is that, we see that, for any single term set, for any single term, single term, C, P of D turns out to be 0. So, that become a problem, the reason is very simple, note that this S can be written as, S is basically N, can be written as union i equals to 1 to infinity i. So, n can be written as the countable union of singleton set. Now, if I try to find out what is the p value of s, which is nothing but p value of i equals to 1 to infinity, p of i equals to 1 to infinity of i, and you see that this i, is this i, the set i, the singleton elementary events, they turns out to be disjoint. And if, as they are disjoint, this quantity same as i equals to 1 to infinity, p of i, and that was it becomes 0, which is not equal to 1, but if p has to be a probability, then p of a has to be 1, uh, because of the definition of the probability. And that is a problem, okay? So, you see that this particular definition give us very meaningful value, this particular definition that limit, uh, lim sub of uh, n, n e divided by n is equal to p of e, this gives a very meaningful value for some set like when the e is the multiple of 3, when e is the set of all integers which are multiple of 4, which are multiple of 5, all those cases it is a very, very meaningful, giving very, very meaningful value, but when but for the other other kind of set, like the singleton set, it is giving a very, very uh, unrealistic uh, value, uh, unrealistic in the sense that it, uh, the, our, our, our probability of our sample space turns out to be zero, okay? But in this case, you see that if I change my sigma algebra, not the power set, from the sigma algebra, if I remove this singleton set such that those will not come into the picture, uh, basically, not the only singleton I am trying to remove. I am trying to remove all finite sets from uh, from the sigma field. Then it can be a probability on S. And more, moreover, if I if I take just for example, if I take this as my sigma field, take take F one, which is basically nothing but S five uh, A and A complement. 
where a is basically nothing a is nothing but multiplied of c so where, where a is a is set of all multiples of 3 then you will easily it can be easily checked that this is a sigma field and the definition we have talked about now turns out to be a probability over this because the you can easily check the probability of a turns out to be 1 by 3 which we have checked probability of a complement turns out to be 2 by 3 and when you try to find out a which is basically union of a, un, uh, a and a complement and this is a consistent one because it is 1 by 3 it is 2 by 3 so the complete thing is a quite meaningful one so in this case simply if i take this one as a sigma field our definition probability equals to lin tube of n n e divided by n turns out to be a probability so basically the meaning here is that uh, see that that thing I have written here that P defines on the power set of S does not satisfy all that P assumes, but P gives meaningful probability for the set like sets like A and B. And I have given you one example where you this example F1. If I take this as a sigma field, the same definition turns out to be a probability. Okay. So the main main thing is that see that in practice the probabilities are used to model some process and if i try to model some uh, practical scenario sometimes i need some extra conditions on the probability extra conditions means that well the three axioms of the definition of the probability has to be true along with these three axioms sometimes i need some extra condition on the probability so that it will be a realistic model for the practical purpose and if I try to do this kind of thing then power set for the power set I may not able to define the probability and in those cases I have to take a proper sigma field over which the particular definition of the probability having extra conditions turns out to be a probability okay so I hope that this point is clear that uh, selection of the probability is meaningful in, in many practical scenarios. So this particular thing I will not pursue much in this course. These are the uh, uh, these are basically the topics in more advanced course of the probability. I will not pursue this thing further here, uh, but I just want to point out keep this thing in mind the sigma algebra or sigma field is an important issue. We have to choose this sigma algebra sigma field properly so that a definition, a rule turns out to be a probability over the sigma algebra. Okay. So let us see now some uh, very simple property of the probabilities. Obviously, you 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 can you you know all those exa all those properties from the classical point of view. Now we are going to prove this thing based on the three axioms given by the definition of the probability. Okay. So first one it says that P of phi is equals to zero. P of null set equals to zero. Obviously, from the classical uh, from the definition of the classical probability, it is very very straightforward because phi has zero elements, so number of elements favorable, number of cases favorable to phi is zero. For the classical definition of the probability, it is very very straightforward. How can I prove it from the from the three axioms I have, the proof is very, very simple. The proof is nothing but I can follow in this way. So, proof of proof of properties of probability. probability. The first one we want to prove. To prove p of phi is equal to 0. Why p of phi equals to 0? Very easy to see this one. You note that phi can be written as phi union phi union dot 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 dot. So phi can be written as the union of the countable union of phi. And you see that if I so if I take a i equals to phi for all i then a i is a disjoint
So if P is probability, then obviously I can write P of union of AI is equals to summation P of AI, which basically mean that, which basically mean that P of phi turns out to be P of phi plus P of phi plus so on and so forth. And as I know that P is a real number, so this is true only if P of phi is equal to zero. For any other real number, this cannot be true. Okay? So that basically shows that P of phi is equal to zero. What is the next thing we try to prove? Next thing we try to prove is proof. Uh, next thing we try to prove is nothing but uh, well, uh, the for for finite disjoint events, the union of probability can be written as the sum of the probability. Note that in case of the definition, we have countable collection of events. So for countable collection of events, I countable collection of disjoint events. I will uh, by the definition of the probability, probability of union of EIs is equals to summation of probability of this particular property, the pro this second property says that this is not only true for the countable union of disjoint events, this is even true for the finite uh, collection of finite disjoint events. Okay? Not only countable collection, but the, the, the finite collection of disjoint events, this is also true. And the proof is very simple to prove that probability of union of PI i equals to 1 to n equals to summation probability of pi i equals to 1 to n for this joint yes. for this joint yes. and this proof is very very simple uh, what i will do is that i will take e n plus 1 equals to e n plus 2 equals to so on equals to phi. So I will take, which basically mean that I will take E i equals to phi for all i greater than n. And then I will use the first axiom, which says, sorry, sorry, the third axiom, which basically says that, note that in this case, note that E i intersection E j is equals to phi for all i not equal because if i and j both are less than n then by the uh, by 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 a given hypothesis it is basically they are disjoint if both of them are greater than n then disjoint because everything is phi and if one of them is less than n uh, less than equal to n and another is greater than n then also this turns out to be phi now i will use the third axiom use the third axiom side axiom like that, probability of union of EI, I equals to 1 to infinity, the same as summation P of EI, I equals to 1 to infinity. And this implies that this union, because after N, it all the sets are phi, after N, all the sets are phi. So that means this union can is basically nothing but the uh, union from i equals to n. So that is probability that union e i i equals to 1 to n. And uh, for for p of e i equals to 0 for i is greater than n. So it turns out to be summation p of e i i equals to 1 to n. So that is basically the proof. So we have the second one is also we have proved the second one that which shows that well if uh, I have finite collection of disjoint events the probability of the union can be the summation of the probability. Okay, now we want to prove the third property which says that P is monotone. What does P is monotone mean? When we call a function from R to R is monotone. If I take two real numbers x and y such that x is less than y, then if f of x is less than equals to f of y for all x less than y, then we say that the function f is monotone. 
or increasing okay so p is monotone basically mean the same thing but keep in mind that p is a set function so its input is p so i need a ordering over the set and the ordering over the set is nothing but the subset and set so p is monotone we need to prove that if i take two events such that u1 is a subset of u2 then p of u1 is less than equals to p of u2 and it is obvious that you see that here if they are real numbers so that here basically it turns out to be less than or equal here it is subset but here it is less than okay how can i prove that the proof is not at all difficult but there is a very important uh, thing we need to understand note that it's not only about here so what we want to prove to prove to prove p is monotone we need to prove that let u1 and e2 are two events such that u1 is a subset of e2 we have to show we have to show that p of e1 is less than or equal to p of e2 okay that i try to show now note that for any event for any event e1 e2 e2 can be written as e2 e1 e2 occurring with e1 and e2 occurring without e1 and e2 is nothing but the union of these two that you can easily see from the venn diagram that if i have two sets e1 and e2 this is basically e2 the e2 can be written as this part plus this part so e1 uh, this you can interpret as e2 occurring with e1 and e2 occurring without e1 and the important part is that another important part is that the intersection of these two sets intersection of the set e1 intersection e2 and e2 intersection e1 complement the intersection of these two equals to 5 that means e2 has been partitioned into two parts one is e2 intersection e1 and another is e2 intersection e1 complement so now i can write the probability of e2 turns out to be probability of e2 intersection e1 plus probability of e2 intersection e1 complement okay if i write this way now i am going to use the hypothesis that hypothesis says that e1 is a subset of e2 note that up to writing this part up to writing here i do not need this condition this this are uh, the right with the this break up this break up this particular break up is true for any two events e1 and e2 now i am going to use this one that e1 is a subset of e2 that basically mean that p of e1 plus p of e2 intersection e1 complement the first part turns out to be this one because e1 is a subset of e2 so e2 intersection e1 is the smaller set it is e1 and this quantity is greater than or equals to p of e1 because probability is always greater than equals to zero by the uh, second assume of the probability okay so that completes our proof so p is monotone so that means if i have a bigger event the probability will be the is the higher at least at least uh, i mean uh, greater than equal to higher basically mean the greater than equal to okay so let us see the fourth fourth property i hope this proof are fine with everyone let us see the fourth property the fourth property says that p is subtractive what does this mean again if u1 is a subset of e2 then p of e2 minus e1 can be written as p of e2 minus p of e1 note that this is not true for any kind any event e1 and e2 i need this condition u1 is less than e2 how can i prove prove is very simple actually we have complete the proof p subtract 
this proof we have completed because we have already written it here. So to prove P is subtractive. We have already proved this one from here. I can write that P of from this one I can write that P of P2 minus P of P1 which is equals to P of P2 intersection P of E1 complement which is nothing but P of E2 minus P of E, P of E2 minus E1. So this is, uh, is a byproduct of the previous, previous uh, proof. Next one, P of E lies between 0 and 1. Note that when we define the probability, we said that P is a function from F to R. Then in the definition, we in the second axiom, we say that P of E is greater than or equals to 0. So that basically makes that the range of P, the possible range of P is only the positive part of the real, that is the non-negative part of the real. Now, this particular property tells that not even the whole non-negative part of the real lies, the range of probability is actually the interval, the closed interval 0 and 1. Okay? The range of the probability is the closed interval 0 and 1. How can I prove this? This proof is very, very simple. Very, very simple that this proof is nothing but I, I, you can you can easily see that for any event, for any event, E, I, the null set is less than E, is less than S. And that completes the proof because we have seen that uh, P of phi, which is equals to 0, which is less than or equals to P of E, which is less than equals to P of S, which is equals to 1. So this proof is fairly simple using the monotone property. Uh, this, proof is, uh, this proof is very, very simple. Okay. Let us take this this one. This is a very, very useful one. I know you all of you are familiar with this particular identity. Uh, let us prove it from the from the uh, definition of the probability and using the properties we have already know about what we are doing. Okay, so the proof again goes in the same way. So we want to prove P of E1 union E2 is equal to P of E1 plus P of E2 minus P of E1 intersection E2. Note that if E1 and E2 are disjoint, then the, this part is phi, so this probability is 0. So that turns out to be the probability of E1 union E2 is equal to probability of E1 plus probability of E2, which we have already seen in the, uh, in the, the first uh, property, which we have already seen in, in, the, sorry, in the second property. Okay. Now to prove this one again, we will proceed almost in the same way. See, uh, I can write that probability of E2 can be written as probability of E2 with E1 plus probability of E2 without E1. This we have seen already. Now, if I, so this can be written as P of E two minus P of E one intersection E two is equals to P of E two intersection E one complement. So that is basically nothing but uh, I take this quantity on the other side of the equality. So if I can show that this part is same as probability of E one union E two minus probability of E1, then I am done, right? If I can show that this probability is same as probability of E1 union E2 minus probability of E1, then I am done. And this is not difficult to show. The reason is nothing but, the reason is nothing but, you see that E1, union E2 that can be written as E1 
union C2, sorry, that can be written as E1. E1 is already inside this and union E2 minus E1. Right? E1 union E2 can be written as E1 and E2 minus E1. And you see that these two are disjoint and E1 intersection E2 minus E1 that quantity is phi. So that basically mean that C of E1 union E2 is equals to C of E1 plus C of E2 intersection E1 complement. And that shows that P of E1 union E2 is equals to P of E1 plus plus this quantity same as this one plus P of E2 minus P of E1 intersection P of uh, sorry P of E1 intersection E2 and that completes the proof. Okay, so again see that the basic idea is basically uh, taking the partition of the of several sets. Once I have taken the partition of E1 E2 here, and then I take the partition of E1 union E2 here, and that completes. The and so that's why this partition things helps many times to solve defined problems. Okay, let us take the second uh, next next property. Next property says that for any event U1 E2 probability of E1 union E2 is less than equals to probability of E1 plus probability of E2 and this is basically nothing by a byproduct of the previous property because probability is always greater than equals to 0 so if I remove this part the, uh, the inequality will be less than or equal to 0. Okay? So it is a very very simple one and I am not writing, writing down this proof. I am going to the next one which says that probability of E complement is equals to 1 minus probability of E. And why this one is true? So to prove P of E complement is equals to 1 minus P of E for any event for any event E. Why this is true? The reason is again very very simple. I can write E1, E sorry, E union E complement equals to S and E intersection E complement equals to phi. So this implies that P of E plus P of E complement is equals to P of S, which turns out to be 1. And that completes the proof. So this one is a very, very simple one. And we have proved some necessary properties of the probability. And obviously, most of the properties you know from the classical definition, but we have proved it from the axiomatic definition, assuming that the, only the axioms are true, then we prove one by one. And when we try to prove a particular one of that we have used, what property we have already proved. Okay, with this, I stopped for this lecture. We will uh, meet again in the next lecture.